Hey guys, Tiago here with Classical Technology. Tonight, I just wanted to do a quick chat about CPU bottlenecking, specifically the upcoming Ryzen 5900X. We're just seeing some pretty amazing benchmarks. If it's true, Intel is gonna have their work cut out for them. I also wanna show you guys this build. It's actually a build in progress. I'm waiting for all this new stuff to launch and I'm gonna do an absolutely monster build. So remember to subscribe. I got a lot of cool water cooling videos as well as tech news coming up and let's get right into the video. All right, guys, so let's get right into it. This here, for anybody curious, is the Case Labs SMA8 case. I'm gonna talk about it a little bit more, but you can see I actually have a Founders Edition 3080 and the water-cooled 2080 right underneath it. I'll talk about it a little bit later, but first, let's talk about CPU bottlenecking, especially with all these new, very powerful GPUs coming out. People have been absolutely going crazy, wondering if their current CPU is gonna be able to handle these GPUs. So as a premise, for the most part, in order to be able to not bottleneck an RTX 3080, 3070, 3090, or even one of AMD's upcoming um, big Navi GPUs, you really do need a CPU that's gonna be able to hit high clocks, meaning that multi-threaded performance isn't the number one factor we're looking for here. We're really looking for those like five gigahertz numbers, as you see commonly in the Intel gaming CPUs. And now as great as Ryzen is, that was definitely one of the pitfalls of the Ryzen architecture. It's that it didn't boost nearly as high as Intel. So Intel was able to sort of keep that crown for gaming going on a little bit longer, even though we all know AMD has really been very, very competitive and beating Intel in many different factors. Recently, AMD released the 3800 XT, 3900 XT, amongst a few others. Basically, what they offered over their previous product was higher clock speeds, therefore being better better at gaming, therefore reducing CPU bottlenecks. Now with Zen 3, the upcoming um, Ryzen release that's going to be announced October 8th, we are starting to get a couple of leaks. The one that I saw today was the 5900X, which is basically going to be similar to the 3900X. It's going to be a 12 core, 24 thread part, which is certainly pretty incredible. But we've seen that already with the 3900X. What's more interesting here is that it's boosting pretty much close or to five gigahertz as far as we have been able to tell. There was even a CPU-Z leaked benchmark. Now we can't really tell the validity of this benchmark, but apparently it's a massive gain in single core performance, meaning that it's gonna be a massive gain for gaming. Now I can start to see it now. Ryzen releases the best gaming CPUs, and then if they can deliver on their gaming GPU, use people are going to want to match their system and have an amd cpu and gpu especially considering if there are no more bottlenecks with higher clocking processors like this supposed 5900x now this is all speculation but in a sense it isn't because we know that's the direction amd has been going with if we look at their 3800 xt or 3900 xt as any indication they've been wanting to do faster and higher clock speeds as opposed to more and more cores i think most people are satisfied with the 3950X. By the way, that's what's in here, a 3950X. I'm going to talk about this system in a little bit as well. But AMD has been pushing that single core performance because that's where they're losing to Intel, if you can consider that losing in certain categories. Now, Intel always says that they have the best gaming CPUs, but of course, if AMD has five gigahertz, huge big clockers coming up, they could very quickly take the crown away from Intel in that last remaining category and just completely dominate them pretty much across the board. All right, so let's talk about this system that you're looking at here. As you can tell, it's sort of like in a half build mode. Um, I actually threw in um, an RTX 3080, that's a founder's edition. And there's a water cool 2080 right underneath it. Usually, of course, I wouldn't do that, but I'm waiting on some water blocks to come out and some things like that. And I'm using it sort of as my test system. You can see this fan, I didn't connect it to RGB yet. I do plan to route the cables connected to RGB. These are the Corsair ML120 RGB Pro fans. I have them all along the case, even in the front here, the bottom. On the top, that's a lot of RGB fans. And you can sync them to one color, so it looks really good. So before I used to have, you know, it's, it's a dual loop. Blue is for the CPU, green are for the GPUs. I used to have two GPUs in here, two of these MSI EK um, 2080s. 
but I sold one of course since the new um, RTX 3000 was releasing and for now I kind of put this in here and yes it does get very hot to the touch but the cooler is pretty efficient and we have 32 gigabytes of the Trident Z RGB RAM the Neo here that's the EK um, that's the magnitude water block it's like one of the best water blocks that I've ever used keeps the GPU really nice and cool and some really nice RGB effects as well MSI X570 Godlike and of course a 3950X Ryzen 9 processor. I do plan to upgrade that when Zen 3 comes out. Most likely maybe the 5950X, that 16 core beast. If this one is good already, I can only imagine how good that will be. With higher clock speeds, this is gonna be an amazing system. And I guess maybe you might be asking, why do I have two GPUs in the system? Especially two different GPUs that you can't even SLI. And of course, look, the 3080 doesn't even have the SLI um, little fingers for the bridge. The 2080 does, not the 3080. I used to have two of these in here and they were an SLI, but I use this system for rendering in DaVinci Resolve and that program does take advantage of two GPUs without SLI. So it scales and it takes advantage of it. So it's actually pretty useful. It's not in here just to look janky, I promise. And another interesting thing, if you'll notice, look, that's a normal power cable going into the GPU. And this is kind of a janky in the middle 12 pin NVIDIA Founders Edition going into a cable. It just makes it look really janky. If it was here, it'd be a little bit cleaner or even here would have been nice. That way you can sort of just throw it to the back. But I do plan to get some cable mod cables in order to make it just more aesthetically pleasing. As you can see, I have cable mod up here, cable mod. I just gotta get this one cable mod. That way it's gonna be really nice. So basically my upgrade path here is gonna be the new Ryzen processor when that comes out next month. And by the way, they're saying possibly October 20th is when they're actually gonna be released on the market. They're announcing it October 8th, of course, but October 20th, I think is when they're gonna to start to ship. Look at that zero fan mode on these new RTX cards. That's pretty cool. So they make it nice and quiet. And then in this space here, most likely if I can get a water cooled 3090 within the next few months, if they're available, I'd love to put that in here. Maybe I'll keep this one just as the second rendering GPU. I don't really want to put a water block on the Founders Edition because I really like this cooler. Um, it performs really well, of course, but also it just looks so amazing. It's so iconic. I'd hate to strip this cooler out in order to just put a water block on it. So I may put this in a different system and get like a water cool 3090 with a 5950X. What do you guys think? That's going to be a monster performing system. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this fun little video. Just chatting about the new Ryzen processors, showing you my plans with this new system. Remember to subscribe if you like my content. I'm going to be talking a lot about PC hardware, water-cooled computers, new GPUs, and CPUs. Smash that like button, and I'll see you guys on the next video.